None of us is as smart as all of us. Ken Blanchard, best-selling author of The One Minute Manager, coined this phrase. This principle underpins the transformation in software development driven by open source software over the last 30 years. Technology used to be driven forward by one company defining the software for each era. The PC era was defined by Microsoft Windows running on our laptops and desktops. But now technology is driven forward by a global community of developers. The mobile era, while being housed on our smartphones, was defined by developers across the world delivering literally millions of apps. There's an app for that. The gaming era was defined by gorgeous graphics and online multiplayer experiences. While your interaction with these technologies may center around the software, what makes all of this happen is the hardware, the chips. These are not potato chips, these are computer chips, okay? The AI era requires a much faster pace of innovation. To meet this demand, hardware needs to transform, like software has, to leverage all of us by adopting open source hardware. Let me tell you how hardware actually works to understand why the status quo won't be enough. Chips are made of transistors. A transistor is like a light switch. A light switch controls the flow of electricity, determining if a light is on or off. Transistors control the flow of electrons, creating digital zeros and ones. Technologists use transistors as the ink for their digital canvas. Hardware has scaled by shrinking the size of these transistors ever smaller and packing more into the next generation chip. If we go back 50 years, transistors were measured in micrometers, smaller than a grain of sand. Now transistors are measured in nanometers, closing in on the size of a single strand of DNA. And the number of transistors per chip has soared. The Intel 4004 introduced in 1971 had fewer transistors than the number of people in this auditorium. But modern chips have tens of billions of transistors. Imagine shrinking people so small that the population of the planet fit in this same auditorium. Chips have grown in performance every, they double every two years for the same price through a trend called Moore's Law. After 10 years, this is more than 30 times performance, and after 20 years, this is more than 1,000 times performance. It's amazing. Hardware scales performance by packing more into one thing. Software scaled differently. Software, rather than pack more and more into one thing, decided to embrace modularity and collaboration. Empowering a global community of developers to work together seamlessly was done through open source and standards. So what is open source? Open source is based on three principles. The first is everyone can see the code. The second is anyone can use or modify the code. And the third is the code is free. This enables developers to build on each other's ideas, accelerating the pace of innovation. Standards define the contracts for how software interacts with other software and hardware. As long as the contract is maintained, the software can, can evolve independently. I've spent my career leading standards where I've had a front row seat to the transformation that open source has driven in software. Open source is literally everywhere, from the devices in our pockets to the cloud. More than 90% of today's software projects contain open source. Software has embraced collaboration, where millions of developers have shown us that none of us is as smart as all of us. We are now entering the AI era. AI is everywhere, even if you don't realize it like when you use search, or YouTube recommends a video, or your car does something smart. 
But most recently, AI has entered the common vernacular through apps like ChatGPT, based on large language models. A large language model is like a giant brain trained on a huge library of books, where each book is a parameter. The more parameters, the smarter the AI. If we go back to 2018, the leading model was trained on only 100 million parameters represented by this dot. Five years later, the GPT-4 model was trained on a trillion parameters, exploding in the number of parameters, and it continues. And the Gemini model goes beyond, beyond text to things like video. I can ask Gemini, where in the one-hour video is the ferocious cat? This is my daughter's cat, Louie, and she is not to be messed with. <laughs> now, remember how I told you that Moore's Law doubles performance every two years? Well, large language models require a doubling of performance every few months. And I've got a little bit of bad news. Over the past decade, Moore's Law has broken down. It turns out that transistors are so small that to make them even smaller takes a lot more time and is much more costly. An implication of Moore's Law is that transistors get cheaper as they shrink, but the cost for the last few generations has remained the same. This has caused technologists to figure out how to build better products in spite of Moore's Law, and they've invested in custom chips that only contain the features and the transistors that are needed for that product. Consider Apple's transition in their Mac laptops from general-purpose Intel CPUs to the Apple M1. The M1 delivers better performance, better battery life, and at a lower price. The gaming era was driven by graphics processing units, or GPUs. These examples of custom chips show the impressive benefits that they bring. But chips are really expensive, costing tens to hundreds of millions of dollars to develop. This means you need a rock-solid business case to develop a custom chip. This causes us to miss out on innovation in hardware. If we look at the AI era, it was actually spurred by accidental innovation when a piece of hardware was used for a purpose different than originally intended. Let's go back all the way to 2013. A PhD student in Canada, Alex Krzyzewski, thought that the best algorithm to win an annual image recognition competition would be neural networks. Neural networks were an old idea and thought to be a dead end. But Alex applied a new tool, specifically two NVIDIA GPUs. GPUs are great at doing matrix multiplication in parallel, ideal for neural networks. Alex won the competition by a huge margin and caused the entire industry to pivot. Now GPUs and other new chips like Google's Tensor Processing Unit are being used for AI research. These new chips, paired with new algorithms, deliver performance that Moore's Law simply cannot match. But how many approaches did researchers try until this breakthrough? Again, showing us that none of us is as smart as all of us. We can scale hardware faster by investing in open source hardware and standards. Standards define how technology interacts. In, in theory, a good standard should be really easy to define, just define good interfaces. But it turns out that standards are created by humans and not by automatons. Automatons are self-operating logical machines and not tauntauns for my fellow Star Wars fans. So <laughs> automatons, tauntauns, not the same thing. Sorry about that. Um, and, and I am a May 4th baby, so I think by law I'm required to include Star Wars imagery. So, <laughs> um, But back to, uh, back to, back to chips. So um, I have some gray hairs from negotiating with humans where I learned that standards are hard, where people struggle to compromise and find common ground. Well, I find research on collective intelligence or group IQ fascinating. It turns out that our collective intelligence correlates more with our team's social ability than it does with the aggregate of the individual team IQ. Luckily, 
if you can't tell, I'm an extrovert, and so I love bringing people together to increase our group IQ. By seeing past surface conflicts and miscommunication, we can build great standards that will help us scale chips. One that I'm excited to share with you is chiplets. Chiplets enable you to break apart a chip into different pieces. You can have standard chiplets that you can just pick up off the shelf. And so if you have a great idea, you can design the portion with your unique idea and then put together the custom, take the standard off the shelf chiplets and put it all together to make a chip. It's like Legos for chips. Another standard I'm excited about is called RISC-V. RISC-V is a CPU standard that's available as a hardware building block that anyone can use. If we go back to 1991, the open source software revolution was started when the Linux operating system was released. RISC-V is to open source hardware what Linux was to open source software. RISC-V is already being included in custom chips. For example, Meta included over 100 RISC-V CPUs in a chip they use to make recommendations in apps like Instagram. Maybe it can help me find some cute cats. Although, I think this one looks more like a furry job of the hut, maybe. I, I'm not sure. Now, you might be wondering, how does hardware and open source relate? Well, the crucial thing to know is that hardware is actually defined in a software language. And so all of the global collaboration mechanisms we've put in place for open source software apply directly to hardware. Let me tell you about an example of open source hardware already in action called Calyptra. It's in the security domain. So what happens if I'm worried about, does the software that is on this chip, is it tampered with or is it safe? Calyptra checks its digital fingerprint, and if the fingerprint passes, then the software runs on those CPUs and GPUs. Now, what excites me about Calyptra is not the technology, even if it's cool, it's that fierce competitors drove this initiative together. Google and Microsoft compete in the cloud. AMD and NVIDIA compete on chips. This is the magic of open source and standards, bringing disparate teams with different worldviews together to work on a common problem and deliver a solution that benefits all of us. Now, the history of open source was impressive. But what excites me is what it can do for us as a society and bring all of us forward and help all of us in our daily lives. One area that's very near and dear to my heart is the new frontier of medical research being accelerated by, by AI. Google DeepMind delivered the AlphaFold database that can, contains the 3D structure of all possible proteins. This is already being used by researchers to search for cures and vaccines in a more accelerated fashion. As a cancer survivor, I'm personally lucky that the gene mutation that impacts me and my family, BRCA, was discovered in the 90s, enabling us to make life-saving decisions. Discovering all gene mutations and designing personalized approaches to prevent cancer in the individual will require enormous computational horsepower. Open source hardware allows us to tap into our hive mind where all of us can try unique ideas, ultimately yielding a breakthrough, like the accidental breakthrough that brought us the AI wave we're all in today. Chips are playing an increasingly central role in all of our lives. If we look back at past technologies, each era had one company leading the chips for that era. The PC era was led by Intel. The mobile era was led by ARM. The gaming era was led by NVIDIA. Our opportunity for the AI era is to enable a larger community to define the chips that drive us all forward by investing in open source hardware and standards. Beyond all of the exciting things that I talked about today, the possibilities are boundless. No single person, let alone me, can predict what a global community will create together. But if we look at open source software, it provides a clue where millions of developers, hundreds of millions, are working together every day to change software that touches all aspects of our lives. Open source hardware can be equally transformative, heralding a new era of Moore's Law, 
bringing in the next thousand-fold increase in compute, driving the next major innovations from everything in science to business to our everyday lives. A future where brilliant minds can stand on the shoulder of giants. Giants they may never meet in real life to do amazing things. An amazing, transformative future based on the simple premise that none of us is as smart as all of us. Thank you.